<laughs> welcome. Why do you do that? Welcome. <laughs> you just love that music, don't you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Thursday. I don't know why you're laughing. It is Thursday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. That's Robert Hilliard. I'm Whitney Wiley, and this is the State of Leadership, Simple and Beyond. And we are here every week talking about all things leadership. And so we are regularly pulling things from the news or situations that, uh, without divulging who they are, situations that we run across with our clients, hopefully helping you to become a better leader. And if after watching uh, a program or two, you think that there's something that we can do to help you, please feel free to read. We would love to see how we can assist you um, with leadership issues or organizational issues. And today we're going to be talking about feedback. Feedback. So let's uh, get this party started. Why don't you? Um, so we're going to be talking about the five keys to providing impactful feedback. And so we're going to start with the very first question, the simple question, which is what is feedback, right? So in order to give impactful feedback, in order to give feedback that's going to make a difference in the lives of the people that you are um, leading, you need to understand what it is. So Robert, what is feedback? It's a two-way conversation to improve performance. That's just it. it it's simple. Uh, I When I talk to people about feedback, I like to tell them what it is and what it isn't. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a two-way conversation. It's not a lecture. And the only reason to have it is to improve performance. Yeah. It, the other thing, it's it's not the annual drudgery. It should happen often. And one of the reasons why people, some people, not all people, some people don't like delivering feedback is because they wait an entire year <laughs> to give feedback. And it becomes this really arduous thing that they would rather not do. So here's the interesting thing. You say that, and I, I, I'm going to share a story about um, one of my evaluations and the <laughs> feedback that came with it. Uh, but what's really interesting is that there have been studies that show that uh, managers actually prefer giving negative feedback rather than positive feedback, which I find a little odd if it is something that is so dreaded and hated why the propensity and or the preference for giving the negative feedback i that part i don't get well i think that there's a lot of there are a lot of leaders out there who function just from legitimate power and we know that legitimate power means position power it's your position and they only well i shouldn't say only that's i don't want to generalize a lot of them may give feedback because they want to put people in their place and uh, or or it's their management style they feel that if they give people negative feedback it gives them something to work on yeah. however if you're only giving negative feedback you run the risk of really damaging someone's um self-esteem no i i agree with you there right it's um if i of giving negative feedback that makes me feel like I'm doing something to help. If I give you positive feedback, then you'll probably think that you don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to go above and beyond. You don't, you don't have to show up on time because everything is great. So if I'm sort of, it, I see it as sort of keeping people on their toes, right? So feedback can be written. It can be in person in a meeting, and we'll talk about when to give feedback a little later. But in in, in furthering the conversation about what it is, I, I would agree with you that it's it's a two way conversation, or it should be a two way conversation. And in the end, it's information about how one is doing, and in an effort to reach a goal, 
right? Whatever that goal is. And so I would say sort of the, if there was a key five and a half or a six key, um, before you can have feedback, you have to have a goal that you're moving towards. And with your employees, at the time that they're hired or at the time that you take over, if you step in, or at the annual, or rather, and at the annual evaluation, the goal setting should be a part of that process. So it's hard to, to evaluate someone or provide feedback when you don't know what you're measuring that against. So um, I would say also that it should be non-judgmental. And the way you would go about that is providing examples. So it it's not, a, this is not your opinion about things. It is the objective measure of what is happening, whether or not that is moving the person towards the goal. And if not, to find the corrective actions that are necessary to get them back on track and, and move in that direction. Um, and I would say that the other thing, because this is communication, right? We, this a conversation is communication. The other thing that you want to do is to make sure that your words are in alignment with your presentation of what you're saying, right? right. It, it, when you are, when your body language isn't in alignment with your words, you create problems. <laughs> There's a disconnect and you create problems. So uh, you want to make sure because feedback in its, you know, in, in its raw form is, a, is communication. And Absolutely. so you need to make sure that, it, and it's not communication if the person that you're communicating with doesn't get the message. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Yep. Absolutely. Anything else on the what? No, I, I think when, when we start digging into it, I think some of this stuff will it'll be iterative. It'll come back up. Okay, awesome. So then let's move to the why. <laughs> <laughs> what's the purpose? And you spoke about that a little bit, but what's the purpose of feedback? What is it that you're doing? And, and, you need to be clear about that in order to do it well. And that's what we're talking about. It's not just feedback for feedback's sake, but it's there's a purpose behind it. So let's talk about that. Well, it's to improve performance, right? So it, it, it you have to have a goal. You have to know what parts of the performance need to be improved. And people like to know, well, most people like to know when they're doing a job, hey, look, <laughs> I'm doing this well, but over here, I need to ramp things up. I need to be better at doing these things. And the really good managers, the people that are really good, I should say, at giving feedback, they know how to tie in the benefits of that message. Look, you're not doing this up to standard. Let's talk about how you can get up to standard. And here's what how you will benefit from doing that. So you appeal to that person's values and that will allow them to kind of link up with that. Not in every case, but you'll have a better chance of doing that if you are able to link up their values, the benefits to the improvement that you're seeking. I agree. I agree. It's it's important that you that you are clear, right? What you are trying to get out of this as well as the person that you are that you are providing feedback to who, that you're evaluating or um, looking to take some corrective path take some corrective action that they are clear so you both need to be clear about why you are there um, and so I, I, I want to sort of share this story and I was having my annual evaluation back a while and the person who was evaluating me, providing me seemingly feedback to, to help me to improve, um, walked in saying that this was the, the their least favorite part of their job. <laughs> okay. 
And, you know, they, they didn't like doing it. And so I was handed my evaluation then, not ahead of time. So I was given it then, expected to read it, and then was asked to sign it without really sort of a discussion about it. And so I'm one who, you know, you know me, um, but the audience may not. I'm someone who wants to do the best job that I am capable of. And so after reading through the scores and some of the comments, my question was, how can I do better? Right. I, the, the score range was like one to five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had been used to in that organization getting fours and fives. I got mostly threes from this person. And my question was, how do I get fours and fives? And the response was, well, I don't really give those. Those are really hard to give. I don't really give them. And so my point in sharing this story is that there was, I did not feel that there was clarity of why we were doing this other than it was a box to check, right? Because that's what we did at the end of every year. And it was moderately tied to a pay increase, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, so there was going, there's this pool of money you were going to get something as long as you, you know, hadn't been fired, basically, you, <laughs> you would get something. Um, and so depending on your final score dictated sort of what you were getting. That is not a clear purpose, right? And the, just to do it, doing it just to do it is not really a, a helpful um, again, this is about doing it well, doing it effectively. That is not a helpful approach to, you know, helping someone to improve. And it ultimately, it, it was on me, right? And right. that's not going to be the case with every employee. So if you don't have employees who are taking it upon themselves to look for development opportunities or asking for what they can do to do better, you're probably not going to get that from your employees if no. your approach is that I'm only doing this to do this. And so again, we are here, we want to help you do it better so that you can get in from your people, right? The, the, the kind of engagement, the kind of growth, the kind of productivity that I think most of us as managers and leaders actually want. Yeah. Imagine the difference if you approach feedback, performance appraisals, whatever, whether they're one-on-ones on a regular basis <clears throat> or the annual appraisal in a way that was like, okay, this is an opportunity for us to get together and strategize ways to make you better at your job. So you can get whatever that person's you know, value is more money. You can get more notoriety. You can position yourself for that promotion. This is an opportunity for us to look at all the wins that you've had throughout the year. And some of the things that you weren't so good at in the beginning of the year, but got better at and look at other things that you can improve on as well. I think that if a, a leader approached it with that kind of enthusiastic attitude, their team members will be more enthusiastic about it as well. I worked in an organization where I didn't get one for 12 years. And I pointed it out. I was like, you know. <laughs> they probably felt as long as you got a raise, what, what do you care? Well, but I do, right, they, obviously they didn't know their audience, which is something that we're going to talk about a little later. You know, know your audience. I like feedback and I, I want to know what I can do to be better at my job. So they, they, were, you know, they were a prime example of a leader that, it, that thought that everyone thought about things the same way that they did. And we're all different and we don't all think the same way as another person does. And so that was, you know, so I, I finally, at one point, I just said, look, how about a performance appraisal? So let's go there. Since you brought it up, let's go there. Know your audience, right? Know your audience. You need to know um, several things about your audience. And, and one, 
we've already talked about are those people who are looking to improve, those people who are looking for feedback. They're asking for it. Um, but there are those who may not be as enamored of feedback or uh, their communication style is a little different than yours. So let's talk about this. Know your audience. You need to know how people like their, it, it's like coffee. <laughs> how do they like their feedback? Do they want, like it raw and unvarnished? Do they want it with a little padding in there, a little sugar in there? You, you have to know your audience. There are some, Look, I, I've managed people before where they, any type of, I don't want to say corrective action, but any type of developmental feedback, they thought the world was going to fall on them. So you know, I needed to put a little sugar in that coffee when I delivered it. There are some people that, I, that I've managed before, they were like, look, I just want to know, give it to me raw don't don't try to pat it out i don't like that i feel like you're trying to you know sell me something just tell me what you want me to improve on and so i would just offer it up to them that way so you need to know your audience but i think one of the ways that you can actually help is have a discussion with your team about how you will deliver feedback if you're a new leader say hey look this is something that i like to do I like to give feedback. Here's how it's going to benefit you. Here's how it's going to benefit the team. If you're a manager that has not done that, you can start this. The, the, the second best time to plant a tree is now. <laughs> plant the tree now. Say, look, I want to do some things different, differently. Here's how you're going to benefit. I'm going to start giving you more frequent feedback. And if you're one of those leaders that don't like giving feedback because you feel that you're not good at it, this is a great opportunity for you to get some practice in. And speaking of which, we're going to talk next week about you receiving feedback, right? How to receive feedback um, that will benefit you. So right now we're talking about you giving feedback, but we'll talk about that, how you can receive feedback and, and tie into that. Uh, you know, I agree with you. It's important for you to understand, not just in the context of feedback, but in relating with your, your team in general, is to, is to get to know them, to understand them, their communication style, their work style, their work ethic, so that when you are talking with them individually and collectively as a team, you can actually communicate, and it's not a one-way conversation. It doesn't come across as a lecture. It's an opportunity for you to share and to receive at the same time. That's what communication is. And so yeah, it, it's important for you to understand how they, you know, what's the best way for you to communicate with them. And as Robert said, sometimes it's the direct, the, the direct approach other, for other people, um, you do. You need to set it up a little bit. You need to pat it. You need to add some sugar. You need to make it palatable so that they can hear you. If it, and, and taking a step back from that even, building relationship so that your people trust you, so that when you are giving them feedback, they understand it's for their benefit. It's for their, their best and highest, not only to help your organization, but to help them. And that starts with you getting to know them, understanding their goals, understanding their values, and how those interact in, in the interplay with what you're doing, both on your team and the broader organization. And until you can do that, right? You, you'll have a difficult time with rapport, with trust. And then when it's time to give feedback, they are either half listening and they are there because they have to be, right? Um, and, and they need to know that you are there supporting them. Now that you've provided this information about corrective actions and things to, that they can do to improve moving forward, are you going to be there supporting them with the tools, the resources, 
strategies if it's necessary in order for them to do it? Or do you share this information and then leave it to their own devices? So uh, and we'll talk some more about that, but you've got to have a plan and you've got to be supportive in the broader context of of what you're talking about with the feedback. Absolutely. So then the next is to develop a clear strategy for delivering the feedback. So what do you say here? <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, this is something that I, I, I've worked on with many, many managers. And one of the things that I, I tell them is to have a plan when, know when you're going to deliver that feedback. And by the way, it should be timely. The only time that, uh, you know, so, you know, perhaps you want to wait and deliver that feedback in private. I'm a big proponent of that. But if the person is doing something that is dangerous, harmful to themselves or the team, have it right then and there. You have that feedback, even if it's in public, you want to have that. So develop a plan for, for having, you know, when, what, what you're going to say, how you're going to say it. We've already talked about that. Um, and where, right? So you need to know where. So if you're going to have feedback in person, is that the place you're going to have feedback? Does it have a lot of distractions? You should probably not have it there. Are you going to do it virtually? Know how you're going to deliver that, you know, and, and when you're going to deliver that. So that's really where I should say you're going to deliver that. The other thing is have an outline know what your talking points are going to be so that you're not stumbling over your words you're not trying to remember things you don't have to go back and retrieve a file that you should have had that should all be up front in your outline you don't have to have a script but if you need a script maybe that's how you operate however whatever's best for you but an outline usually works best for other people that's really important also, part of your strategy is knowing, anticipating any sticking points that may come up. What might that person object to? Have a plan for how you're going to have that discussion. And here's the thing, know your own personal kryptonite. If you are the type of person that doesn't like to deal with strong emotions and because of the emotion that pops up, you start stuttering or you start talking or changing the subject and it's not very effective, have a plan, uh, I, I should say, have countermeasures for that. So if you have a weakness, have a countermeasure for the weakness so that you can deliver feedback in the most effective way possible. I, I absolutely agree. You know, I say frequently, luck is not a strategy. So <laughs> that means you need to develop one. And yeah. uh, all the things that you talked about, that may, basically this means coming prepared right? Coming prepared, um, except in the situations that Robert mentioned, you know, there's some immediate danger. If it is something that can be planned, take the time to plan it. It doesn't have to be overly formal, right? And we'll talk about the when you do this, but it doesn't have to be or overly formal. But if it doesn't involve other people, you should keep it between you and the person you're providing feedback to. And you should go prepared. And I think thinking through eventualities, potential responses, re re resistance, right? Just sort of thinking through what can come up to make it easier on yourself and to show that you have given this some thought, that this is not just some off the you know, off the cuff thing that you're doing, some spur of the moment thing that you're doing that you haven't given any thought to. And certainly that feedback that comes, it seems well thought out, well intentioned, it is better received than something that seems haphazard and, you know, that, that doesn't seem to come together or tied to what is happening in reality. And I think your point about um, objections or that if there's pushback, right? Sort of thinking through that is quite helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Which brings us to key number five. You want to deliver your message at the right time. So this is about timing the win 
and then follow up. And so the right time to deliver the message, and then there needs to be a right time for the follow-up. So um, what do you say here? <laughs> the right time to deliver the message is as soon as you can, <laughs> because here's the thing. If you, I may not have, I may not remember what I've done, good or bad. And if you wait three weeks, a month to have the conversation, I'm not going to remember what I did. And that's going to make it very difficult for you to deliver that feedback in the best way possible. Now, if you see something that the team member is doing that has got you irate, <laughs> that's not the best time to deliver feedback. So give yourself enough space to get some emotional equilibrium, but you don't want to drag it out. So maybe a day or two, have that feedback. Try to have it as soon as possible, though, because you want it to be fresh in their mind. You don't want to be trying to recall. And I've had this happen on numerous occasions in, in, a, <laughs> in a past life. I worked in HR, and one of my jobs were to assist managers, was to assist managers in delivering feedback. Now, they, they were doing their own performance evaluations, but if they needed help, I was a resource for them. But the employees also knew that if they didn't agree with the performance appraisal, they can call me up and I would set a meeting up with the manager. And you would be surprised you know, between the manager and that person, I would be the mediator. You would be surprised at how many managers were giving out performance appraisals and expecting empl employees to agree to things that the employee had no recollection of. And so you need to let that person know. So my suggestion to these managers were, you, know, you need to have regular meetings with your people. I know you're busy, but look at all the time that we spent. We spent two and a half hours or an hour going back and forth here, talking about this issue. When if you, when, if you had spent a little time up front having a one-on-one -on -one with your team member, having one-on-one -on with your team members, this would not have happened. So it needs to be timely, not, you know, four weeks, a month out <laughs> into the future. Look at the time frame. It should be as close to the event as you can possibly make it. Absolutely. And th the notion that you would bring it up in the annual evaluation that is months and months away is not at all helpful, right? It, it might make your it might seemingly make your job easier to write. I'm just going to make notes of things. I'm going to keep keep a notepad of things that I want to address in the annual evaluation. But if the first time they ever hear of that is in the annual evaluation, and, and let's assume that that review is months later, you may get repeat performances of that behavior. Right, which is the other thing is that this should be about the behaviors. This is not about personalities. This is not you tearing people down, but about behaviors that need improving in order to get the best from your employee and ultimately the best from your team. Um, I want to share a, a story. This is sort of a this is a managing up story. story. Um, and I had a situation that. I will say, going to your point about the frame of mind and sort of taking the time to to show up with a calm demeanor. Um, I had a situation where I, my boss was, let's just say, sort of interfering the best way I can put this, interfering with me in the performance of my job. Um, the our, our situation was she was relatively new to the position, new to the organization. I had been there some 10 years or so at the point at which she came. I had been very used to doing things on my own with very little input and feedback quite frankly, from the bosses that I had had previous to her. Um, and so there, we had not had an opportunity 
to sit down and talk about her management style, um, the kind of manager that I thrive under. And so we find ourselves one day in a situation where I was quite irate by something that she had done or uh, several somethings that she had done. And I, there was a moment where I was like, I'm going to go into her office and, you know, I'm just going to say what I have to say. And I remember taking a moment and saying, you really need to calm down. Because if you go in like this, first of all, she's not going to hear anything you have to say because I was pretty upset. Um, but it gave me some time to go back and come up with a strategy so that this wasn't me going in complaining. This was me going in saying this, you know, as far as I was concerned, this is what I need. This is how I will thrive. This is how I will be the best employee that I can be for you to make you look good. Right. And I wanted to do everything I could to keep her out of my work. So it's like, I want to go and present this in a way that appealed to what I, what little I knew about her at that time. And so it was all the pieces, knowing my audience, right? Sort of being clear on what I wanted, the outcome that I wanted, the behavior changes that I wanted from her, which to a large degree I got. Um, I will admit this, even though I took a day or two to calm down when I actually went in, I did get a little animated. <laughs> it's a little elevated because I was I felt like I was getting a lot of defensive, you know, comments back. And so uh, but we worked through it and for the most part I did not unless I went to her to ask for assistance or uh, help developing strategies for the work that I was doing. For the most part, she left me alone after that. And so the, the point is that you, it matters, right? When you do this matters, what state of mind you are in matters. Um, the, walking in and saying, this is the least favorite part of your job, or you don't like giving feedback or, you know, setting the environment in a, sort of a negative way doesn't help to convey confidence or trust and is going to make it difficult for you to get your message across. And when you are truly doing this for the benefit of your employees so that their changes will benefit the team, and then that will be a reflection on you and how well you are managing your team, it really makes sense to, to try a different approach. Absolutely. I mean, I wonder how that manager would have felt if you went into their office and said, you know, talking to you is the least, <laughs> least favorite part of my job. <laughs> they probably would have, you know, went off. But, you know, there, there's this, they don't have those types of compunctions. <laughs> they don't say anything to, to their, their subordinates. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, you need to give yourself that, that space sometimes but you don't want to let it go too far. And that, I think that's the, you know, it's, that's the art of management. You, you know, it's, it's not a science when it comes to that. It's a science in some parts, but here's the art. You need to know exactly when to do that and you will be able to figure it out if you're paying attention to the matter at hand and your folks. And, you know, if your schedule is, you know, just right, you can, you can do that. Uh, absolutely. So do you have any final thoughts you'd like to uh, leave today? Yeah, you know, I, I think as part of the plan, have a before, during, and after, right? But really spend some time after. You know, a lot of times when I work with leaders, when they have to give feedback, I'll say, how did it go? And they'll be like, it went, it went okay. And I said, okay, what did you do afterward? I tried to forget it. <laughs> it's moved on as if it never happened. So ask yourself some questions. You know, what went well? And here's the thing, even if you think you're terrible at delivering feedback, 
you can always find something that you did well. And I encourage you to do that. Even if it's, you know, I introduced the topic very clearly. Focus on that too. Give yourself a pat on the back for doing that because that's going to help you develop some confidence and propel you forward. Also, look at what didn't go so well, but not just from the lens of, okay, this didn't go so well and I'm not going to uh, really touch it, touch it again, but then dig deeper. What was the biggest challenge? What was the biggest challenge in there? And then what's your plan so that you can make that challenging thing less so? I think that is really important. Have that, having that reflection with anything that you are not that great at right now, because you can get better at it if you take some time and reflect and make a plan to get better. You know, the, the, what I'd like to leave you with is, and this touches on something you just said, Robert, um, and what you said at the beginning is it, it, unless and until we adopt a different mindset about giving feedback, stop being afraid of it, stop looking at it as a negative, um, stop looking at it as a potential for conflict. And we talked about conflict in a prior uh, episode. You go back and, and look at that. Conflict um, is, you know, it's, another opportunity to to learn something right there's feedback in there it's just the difference of opinion and ideas on things and everything doesn't have to be elevated or escalated and so if we can adopt a different mindset about feedback and make it less about us and more really about helping our people to improve Right. If we change, just reframe this and refocus this about helping them to improve. And it's not about you going and telling someone all the things that they're not doing right, but going with a plan and a strategy and actually really a heart for helping them to be better. I think you'll see that it doesn't have to be the worst part of your job. It doesn't have to be, you know, a negative thing or something to dread. And it can actually be productive and enjoyable for both sides. It just takes a willingness and an intentionality to have that be the way you want to approach it. So with that, um, we want to thank you for joining us next week. As mentioned, we're going to talk about how to receive feedback. So we hope that you will join us for that. Um, but we want to thank you for being here today for the state of leadership, simple and beyond. We're talking again about impactful feedback if you found this to be helpful, we would love to hear from you. You can leave a comment. Uh, let us know if you saw this on a replay or if you watched it live. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, because we're on YouTube, LinkedIn, and on Facebook in the Dream Job and Career Connection group. If you saw this on YouTube, we would love for you to subscribe, like, and until next time, which will be Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific. No, 3 p.m. Eastern, <laughs> noon Pacific. You just let me, you just let me say whatever it is I want to say, don't you? Um, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, a state of leadership, simple and beyond. And until next time, take care. Take care. <laughs>